Tomorrow is Ghana's birthday and it's a holiday. That's a creative way to put it. I saw a book called Ghana is Born and it made me think of birthdays. It had the day 1957 on it. Wait, so Ghana didn't exist before 1957? I love how observant and intelligent you all are. Ghana used to be called the Gold Coast. On 6 March 1957, the Gold Coast officially became known as Ghana, Ghana's Independence Day. What does independence really mean? Fantastic question. The Gold Coast was under the control of the British. They made decisions for the people of the Gold Coast. Independence means that a country can make its own decisions and choices without being controlled by someone else. On 6 March 1957, Ghana was free from the control of the British. Yay, freedom! I wish we had Independence Day celebrations every week. I like celebrating by wearing lovely Ghanaian clothes, singing, marching, dancing, and learning about great Ghanaian leaders like the Big Six. Feels like a party. I just had a thought. How did people celebrate in 1957? Wow, that was over 60 years ago. Brilliant question. Let's find out more about what Independence Day was like in 1957. Actually, it was a whole week of celebrations marking very important events. People traveled to Accra from places all over Ghana. Some by train, some by bus or wagon, and some by car. It was a wonderful show of culture. Streets buzzed with excitement and celebrations were planned for each day of the week. Ghana's independence marked a major turning point in Africa's history. Because Ghana was the first sub-Saharan African country to gain independence from colonial rule. Ghana's independence sparked liberation movements in many other African countries. Journalists and leaders traveled from all corners of the world to attend the events, which was to end with a long-anticipated 6 March celebration. Among the distinguished guests, were the Duchess of Kent, the Vice President of the United States, Richard Nixon, and the Vice President of Liberia, William Talbot. In the days leading up to the long-awaited 6th March, there were Thanksgiving services, special dinners, large parades with floats that attracted large crowds and important meetings and tours. People had looked forward to this week since the news of independence was first broadcasted on the 18th of September, 1956. On every corner, you could see the word freedom inscribed on clothes, displayed on floats, and newspaper headlines. The newly designed Ghana flag lined the streets and hallways. The flag was designed by a woman called Theodosia Oko. Each color and symbol was carefully chosen. Red depicted the struggle for independence, gold representing Ghana's wealth, green portraying Ghana's rich vegetation, and the black star symbolizing African freedom and unity. The celebrations continued. Some very interesting events took place, like canoe races known as the Accra Regatta, and lots of other contests, like hair braiding contests, as well as a Miss Ghana competition. The 5th of March, the eve of independence, was a very special day. Near the Christiansborg crossroads, the independence arch was unveiled. The arch was beautifully lit up in the night sky and on it, the crowd of onlookers read, Freedom and Justice, AD 1957. Close by in the assembly building, Nkrumah, supported by his ministers, gave a speech a few minutes before midnight. One line read, For within the space of a few minutes, our colonial association with Britain will disappear. Outside the assembly building, enormous crowds gathered across the street on the old polo grounds. Many whispered, How many minutes to freedom? As the clock struck midnight, the Union Jack was lowered forever. And in its place, the Ghana flag was raised. Shouts of joy filled the night. Kwame Nkrumah, along with some of his ministers, mounted the podium and he spoke to the crowd, saying, 
At long last, the battle has ended. And thus, Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. As far as the eyes could see, there were shouts of joy and tears of joy. The road to freedom was filled with many challenges. The outfits worn by Kwame Nkrumah and ministers served as a reminder of the struggle. The white caps with the words PG on them were prison caps, showing the difficulties faced on the journey to independence. Including the imprisonment of the big six, the independence movement leaders seen on Ghana's currency. During the midnight independence celebration, Kwame Nkrumah asked the band to play Ghana's official national anthem for the first time, following a prayer and a minute of silence. A new anthem written by Philip Beho for a new nation. The celebrations continued late into the night. The sounds of a rejoicing crowd, firework displays and honking horns could be heard miles away. The morning of 6 March was a crucial moment in history. The ceremonies at the state opening of Parliament mark the official transfer of power. The Duchess of Kent, the representative of the Queen of England, in the presence of many great Ghanaian leaders, spoke at the first Parliament of Ghana saying, My government in the United Kingdom has ceased from today to have any authority in Ghana. Kwame Nkrumah's famous drive from the state opening of Parliament to the crowds in Accra marked a new era of leadership in Ghana. Backed by his own words, that new Africa is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all, the black man is capable of managing his own affairs. Although Nkrumah served as prime minister beginning in 1952, with the first government of all African ministers, the British government still made decisions for the people of the Gold Coast, including the control of the rich resources of the Gold Coast. Now, Kwame Nkrumah was driving through the crowd as the leader of a free nation, Ghana. The cheers from the crowd were reminiscent of the day in 1951, when he was released from prison after being imprisoned by the British government. Freedom at last. On the evening of 6 March, parties were held all over Ghana. At the state reception and ball in Accra, the dance between Kwame Nkrumah and the Duchess of Kent showed that the Ghanaian government was willing to establish and maintain a good relationship with the British, despite the history of oppression and forced imprisonment. The 1957 celebrations went beyond the borders of Ghana. Ghanaians around the world also celebrated Ghana's independence in places like London and New York. People were excited about Ghana's future and were inspired by Kwame Nkrumah's words shared during his midnight speech. We have awakened. We will not sleep anymore. Today, from now on, there's a new African in the world. I think I finally understand the line in the Ghana national anthem that says, and help us to resist oppressors. The battle to freedom and independence was not easy, and Ghana wasn't free to make its own decisions before 1957 because the British were in charge. And I see why we have the red stripe in our Ghana flag. It helps us to remember the struggle for independence and all who fought for it. I'm glad that there was a whole week to celebrate Ghana's Independence Day in 1957. When you work hard for something, it's important to celebrate. And that's why we celebrate Ghana's Independence Day every year. Ghana's freedom is a big deal. <laughs> it truly was and is a big deal. Ghana's independence led to the freedom and independence of many other African nations. It also inspired civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King. The black star on our flag and places like the Independence Arch is a symbol of African freedom. Yay, freedom! God bless our homeland, Ghana. Oh, before we go home for the holiday, just as you pointed out the importance of the red stripe on the Ghana flag, 
We should also pay attention to the yellow and green stripes. A reminder for all of us to look after our rich resources and our vegetation and use them wisely. Be a wonder space explorers. We will look after our environment and cherish our wonderful resources. Wonderful!